Available from the Insim Marketplace and free of charge is the Top Gun Maverick add-on. And if you click on the Maverick Activities and then select Challenges, there's all the typical challenges we would expect, except one. It's the Dark Star. Select this one and it's something completely different. It's a fictitious aircraft which I guess owes its origins to the Maverick Top Gun movie. But it provides us an opportunity to fly at 120,000 feet at Mach 9 or above and go from one side of the States to the other in 35 minutes. Fly at an altitude of 125,000 feet. Sorry, did anybody say Microsoft Space Simulator? Welcome back to the Sim Hangar. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. Well, just for a bit of fun, it's certainly worth a look. Welcome to the cockpit. If you have or are going to try this, there's a number of settings you need to be aware of. Go to the control options menu. On the forums, I see some people have had difficulties getting up to the altitude, getting enough speed, and being able to take off from the runway. Make sure your selected controller is highlighted. I'm using the T-Flight HOTUS 1, and you can search by name, but you need to ensure that you configure the function Toggle Afterburner to a key or combination of keys. No afterburners, you're not going to get off the ground. Also, go to your sensitivities, and for your pitch control, nose up, nose down. Make sure it's linear, no sensitivity curve applied. Mine is Joystick L Axis 3. If you put a sensitivity curve in there, you won't get enough nose up to get off the ground. OK, that's done. Let's get out of here. Let's go back and fly this thing. It's telling us to release our parking brake. Well, that's easy enough. Then push the throttle forward to mill, which is fully forward. We're starting to move and it tells us to activate the afterburners, which I've now done. While this thing is quick, I'm already doing over 100 knots. Looking to rotate at above 180 knots. Already at 220 and pulling back all the way on the stick. Get your nose up. We're up. Speed passing 350 knots. Gear now coming up. We're doing 0.5 Mach. Got my nose a little high. It's telling me to get the pitch to about 10 degrees and build up speed to 0.9 of a Mach. One eye on the GPS in the lower right hand corner of the main display. I've kept the afterburners on, kept pitch until I reached 0.9. Now I've raised my nose to maintain roughly 0.9 Mach. Now passing 23,000 feet. Well, I've now just passed 35,000 feet and it's telling me to roll inverted. It wants me to go upside down. Well, this could be a bit tricky at this speed especially for a GA pilot such as myself. Although I know a few people on the Simhanger Discord that will be right at home with this. Now it wants me to pitch down 20%. Whoops, that's the wrong way. Now pushing my nose towards the ground so that I gain speed. I think this maneuver is to help me get over one Mach. That's it, I've just passed the speed of sound, Mach 1. Now it's telling me to roll back the other way keep my nose down, which I'm doing. Now 1.15, altitude now heading down towards 30,000 feet. Oh, and now it's telling me to pull up. 1.28 Mach and rising. At this speed, she's sluggish on the controls. I'm pulling the stick all the way back just to get the nose back up. Speed still increasing, coming on 1.4. Now telling me to gradually pitch up to 10 degrees. Trying to maintain the 1.2 G pull up. That's the indicator in the blue square, but quite hard to establish and hold that position. Gently pulling back on the stick. Need to get my nose up at 10%. Maintaining this attitude, speed now Mach 2. And I've got to hold this until the aircraft reaches Mach 3. Then we're going to have the opportunity to use these scram jets. Altitude 42,000 feet. I've continued the climb, speed now Mach 2.97 and just passing 60,000 feet. The only thing that could be up here now would be a Concorde. Ah, new instruction, activate the bottom beaker switch in the cockpit. 
that's over here and there's two of them we need to switch them both on there we are that's done now it's telling us to activate the fuel cell switch in the cockpit which is just below the main display on the right click on that and now we can activate the scramjet switch altitude 70,000 feet and switch on they take a little while to kick in hear that roar as they initialized and once they kick in we'll definitely feel it as it will accelerate us to hypersonic speed here we go watch the max speed indicator top center now we just got to stay on course which is easier said than done as she doesn't turn very easily at this sort of speed hold a 10 degree pitch and head up into the stratosphere with a plan leveling out at about 120,000 feet and Mach 9 nearly Mach 4.5 already approaching Mach 5 and heading to 100,000 feet despite the scramjets being on we can't hear very much because we're traveling at five times the speed of sound but if we move behind the aircraft bang we should hear it Now coming up on Mach 9, that's instructing us to maintain around about 120,000 feet. Keep an eye on the GPS and the magenta line. She's very slow and reluctant to change direction and particularly to turn. Get too far off course and you'll have a problem. Look at that phosphorus glow on the airframe. Well, some 15 minutes later and it's telling us to pitch down to 10 degrees and achieve a negative G of not more than 0.3. Approaching Mach 10, at this speed we're going to be there very quickly indeed. The cockpit functionality of the Dark Star, well it's basic, but provides just enough interaction to keep this challenging, interesting and exciting. The distance indicator on the main panel is not to Cape Canaveral but to the next waypoint. Ah okay throttle back to idle that'll kill the scramjets and we got to pull the stick all the way back nose up to help slow down the aircraft to Mach 5 telling me to stay above 80,000 feet too late I'm below that already I'm already at 63,000 feet now telling me to pitch down 10 degrees and descend to 50,000 feet clear the runway we're coming in hot now approaching 50,000 feet. Still wants me to pitch down and now to advance the throttles to 80% power. Already doing Mach 2.5. Slowing down could be interesting. This thing doesn't have flaps and I'm not even sure. I don't even think it's got air brakes. To make it more interesting, I'm a little bit off course as well. Well, we've dropped out the sky. Now it's a little bit easier to get back on course now that our speed has ebbed away. Mach 0.76 One more waypoint to go and then on to the runway 35 minutes since we departed and light starting to fade Got my gear down to help slow us down Speed still very fast 280 But the most worrying thing is of course you can't see where you're going in this thing you have to rely on the visual display. Watching my speed, I don't want to get too much below 200 knots or she gets very sloppy very quickly. At last I can see the runway on the display and have to hold it more or less central. Right now I'd rather come in a little bit too slow and low than too fast and high. Instructions are land on runway 13. Yes, I know, I'm trying. I can warn you right now, this may not be pretty. I've only done this once before and that ended in tears. Here we go, coming down. Speed now dropping below 200. Oh, it's a hard hit. But we're down. Brakes, brakes, brakes.
Well, we completed the challenge in just under 40 minutes. And it was great not to be too serious about the sim and just have a bit of fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you very much for joining me today. Stay well, look after yourselves. I'll see you soon and bye for now.